Hey y'all, <clears throat> how are you today on Friday? I'm sorry I'm so late. I was busy reading an old book, uh, thinking about what I wanted to talk about today and reading this old book by Fanny Flagg called Coming Attractions. And I think it was republished under another name that's kind of like Daisy Faye and the Medicine Man or Daisy Faye and something or other. Anyway, it's hysterical. It's it's um, authored by or told from the eyes of a young girl, Daisy Fay, who I think was Fanny Flagg. And Daisy was raised in an alcoholic home. And um, I was thinking about some of the funny, weird stuff that happened in my home. And, um, you know, initially I couldn't find the joy in a lot of stuff that happened in my childhood because it was just so embarrassing or hurtful or something. And um, it wasn't until I did some of my own work that I finally was able to laugh at some of the, some of the stuff that happened. And um, it, just, it just brought me back. So I went and got this book and began reading some of it. Um, this, anyway, it's, it's hysterical. Uh, I'll read one little tiny part, and you may not think it's funny, but so she was, uh, her mother's really uptight, bless her heart. She needs an Al-Anon meeting, but um, her mother is uh, just so disappointed with her drunk husband, who is just so colorful in this book. He has all sorts of wild ideas. Of course, he has a drunk friend, and they get drunk fly airplanes and things, and he always has some scheme. He's going to make it, you know, get rich quick. And, uh, but anyway, she was talking about her mother having such a nervous disposition. And then uh, <clears throat> she says, Mama's nervous all the time. She's worn a hole in the floor in the passenger side of Daddy's car from putting her foot on the brakes. Mom always looks like she's on the verge of a hissy fit. But that's mainly because she was, when she was 18, she stuck her head in a gas oven to check on some biscuits and blew her eyebrows off. So she paints them on little, little half moons. People love to talk to her because she always looks really interested, even if she isn't. Now, I thought that was funny. She goes on and describes, it's from the, this child's point of view, and it's so funny. Um, and I was just thinking about that, and also thinking about my sister, uh, which incidentally, don't you like this top? I stole it from her last time I was in Maryland. Um, but my sister and I used to huddle together during these um, episodes. And today we can laugh about most of them anyway. Um, God, I don't know how any of us survived. So one thing I did know growing up is I knew I was loved. I knew I was loved. But um, sometimes I get um, real concerned about, very, very, very concerned about children in an alcoholic home. And I certainly don't need, mean to minimize it, but when I think of some of what I grew up through and made it and worked through it and can recover the joy underneath it, it's too funny. You know, we were always loaded up in the back of, I don't know, somebody's car and somebody's pickup truck. I don't think my father owned a pickup truck, but I remember one time we were in the back of a pickup and, um, you know, he spit out the window or something, and I was sitting in the back with my sister, and it landed right on my sunglasses, and, of course, she thought that was hysterical. I didn't think that was so funny, but uh, I can laugh about it today. Um, <clears throat> I told you all about the church pew in the background. Um, and then some other really funny, funny, oh, my father had a fight with the neighbors and threw a dead animal at that man. I mean, we were all, all of us kids were sitting in the front yard watching all this. And I guess somebody would call us traumatized today. We just giggled. Um, that's not the kind of behavior that I would encourage other people to um, do. But um, anyway, we had a good time. We were poor and didn't know it. Um, till we went to school and then we began realizing we didn't have as much stuff as uh, other people did. But, um, you know, for the most part, um, it was a fun time. And um, <clears throat> let's see, one other little thing that I want to leave you with is uh, 
we were um, driving from, well, we'd always go to Illinois, go back to see relatives. And one time I was sick and tired of, of having to stop. We, I remember one trip, we had 11 flat tires going from Texas to Illinois because my dad would only buy $3 tires. And uh, <clears throat> we were in a, some gas station waiting for them to do something to the car and get a new tire on it. And my mom said we could split a, in those days, a Delaware punch. Um, it was some concentrated grape thing. And I just did, I think it was probably the only thing that wasn't carbonated and had caffeine in it, it just had sugar. So we got to split that and I said, uh, why don't they put plain water in these machines? Why can't we just buy a bottle of water? And everybody, including the people in the gas station, looked at me and started laughing and said, well, that's the stupidest thing we've ever heard. Nobody's gonna buy water. I rest my case. That's the sort of stuff that children get said to them. And then we, I of course thought, well, yeah, that's a dumb idea, Jeannie. Now I wish that I had taken that idea and run with it. And then y'all would all be buying my water. But, we still laugh about that today. I hope you're having a good Friday, and don't forget to laugh this weekend. It's serious out there, I know, but laugh. There's, that is not closed. Laughter is not closed, and joy is not closed. I love you, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Bye.